Do I need a motion for that, or are we good? I'll good. make a motion if you want. To call, I don't call think we do. No, we just call the no. order. We have a quorum. Okay. Perfect. Um, so let's go ahead and get the ball rolling with the director's report. Chris, you're up. All right. Director's report, March 2nd, 2023. Uh, two curbside pickups, 206 patrons, 145 students. That is amazing. Yep. Yeah. Story time attendees, we had 31 adults, 41 children, for a total of 72 attendees for the month. That's out of four uh, story times. Uh, we had two volunteers with a total of four visits and eight and a half hours of volunteer time for the month. We issued six new cards. Our Facebook page reach in February was 2,207. Total page likes in February was 807. Page followers for Facebook was 883. Facebook page and profile visits. This was formally check-ins at our location. Uh, <coughs> February was 322. For Instagram page reach, we went up to 40. Our followers have increased up to 58. And our Instagram profile visits, which means they go to actually look at the Hoverston Public Library Instagram page is 21. Our most popular posts, the first one was Storytime Hugs with Pearl with 1,148. And the number two was the library open late due to extreme cold, 1,003. We had 85 Wi-Fi connections for February. For the library numbers, Hubbardston items circulated regardless of location, February 1,358. All items circulated at Hubbardston, regardless of ownership, uh, 1,446. Requested holds was 218. Total number of patrons registered at Hubbardston was 1,450. Total number of items in the library, 12,117. For our overdrive, total checkouts from Hubbardston patrons as of FY22, that has increased to 4,892. Uh, for the month of February, it was 426. The library was closed Saturday, February 4th, due to the extreme cold. Monday, February 20, 20th, for President's Day, and Tuesday, February 28th, due to a snowstorm. The Senior Book Club met on February 22nd and discussed Crossfire by Dick Francis. There were two in attendance. The Not Just Knitting program was scheduled for February 28th, but due to the storm, was canceled. This program will be held twice in March. The display in the adult reading room for February celebrated Black History Month. The children's reading room also celebrated Black History Month, as well as President's Day and Valentine's Day. Story time is back at the library. Miss Patricia has organized books and craft, crafts each Wednesday. Parents are requesting a second story time for those children who cannot attend on Wednesday. We are looking at either Monday or Thursday at 1 p.m. I believe that our current budget can accommodate this edition. Uh, respectfully submitted by Christine Barbera. Great, thank you so much. You're welcome. Does anyone have any comments or questions about the director's <coughs> report? I think growth in uh, afternoon story time would be phenomenal. Yeah. For the town. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree, and I think um, like the story time attendance seemed really good, like seventy two like parents and children, like that seems like awesome. So I'm yes. really excited to see that. So. Yes, we're very happy with that. Anything else? Um, I just wanted to ask about the budget stuff at the end, um, mm -hmm. like just for the minutes. Should I just yep. say we? The budget stuff was included or something oh sure I'm, i apologize uh, i'm not saying you have to go over it i'm just no i'm not going to go over it but i will say that i did attach okay. the year to date um expenses and income for the various accounts and this is uh i'm sorry it's not as of 228 it's actually as of 131 i will get february's numbers probably next week I'll just say that we're also included. Thanks. Mm -hmm. 
You mentioned that the uh, budget can tolerate the increase in yes. story time. Yes. If it doesn't, please come back to us. We'll do whatever okay. you need. All right. I think it's great. All right. Um, can we have a? Uh, does everyone have a chance to review the February meeting minutes? And if so, can I have a motion to approve them? I will make a motion to approve February <coughs> meeting minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Wait, weren't, weren't there some, you, you had some... Um... I did make some changes to them. They were sent out in the in the last meeting amendment. It was just a change to um, the discussion about CIPC and CPC funds. So um, I just wanted to clarify that CIPC, um, people, the folks on the CIPC committee can allocate and make recommendations for funding and it needs to be approved at the annual town meeting, um, which is comparable to what happens with the CPC committee. They can um, allocate funds, but also needs to be approved at the town meeting. So, and this will come up later, but we did receive $6,000 in funding from CIPC for the project manager. And that will be, as long as it's approved at the annual town meeting in June, we will be funded for that. So um, the meeting minutes seem to suggest that CIPC couldn't allocate funds and they can't allocate upon approval at the town meeting. So so you're saying you already put that in the minutes that were distributed? Uh, I thought you put that in the meeting minutes. I'm sorry. I did, but I, when you sent it out, I hadn't put it in yet. So I was a little bit confused. Oh, I think it's a live document. Oh, it's a Google Doc, so it should Got it. be. Okay, so you guys saw that updated. with the red. Should have been updated. So it was red in the minutes. I can go back. I just want to make sure we're appro the, um, approving with the edits. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just go back to my. Because I think I made a I made a different copy because I wasn't sure, so it may not be in. Here. Oh, okay, that would be my mistake. I assumed you. Uh, I thought you had updated the um, current meeting minutes. Okay. Yeah, that was. My, I I just wrote uh, the capital improvement planning committee is primarily is primarily a planning committee. That, the Community Preservation Committee allocates funds received from the state. Both the CPC and the CIPC can make recommendations slash allocations for projects, but their funding sources differ. And then that is Connie just said project recommendations, allocations from both committees must be approved at the town meeting. So that, that is the update. Right? That's the update, but I don't think it might, you might not have seen it. That's what I... But that is the update, correct? So yes. So we're okay with that. Okay, so I'll just put that into the other the other copy. Sorry, I think I made it more confusing than it needed to be. So we don't have to say that they were revised, that we're just approving them with that statement in there. Right, yeah. Okay, got it, okay. So, I'm ready. <laughs> I'll approve or? Vote to approve. Uh, motion to approve, sorry. Yes, sorry. I'm, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Morgan, you're up with uh, library scholarship information. So if there are no major changes to how we've done it the last couple of years, the deadline would be for June, end of June. Um, are the trustees comfortable with that? I thought everything looked fine. I just wonder if you want to put on the poster how to apply. Okay. Yeah, that was one comment I had as well. Um, if you have it, the poster out there, it would be good to tell them where they can either come to the library website or um, where they can pick up applications. There was just that paragraph in the application. Is it in the application? It's in the application. It's not yeah. in the flyer. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So Great. with those edits, would the trustees be comfortable with me sending it to the library director and having it published? Sure. Yes. Okay. Right. Do, we, do we need a motion for that or are we good? We're good. Okay. It's just process. It's process, okay. okay. Sorry, there's like a big party happening outside my apartment. Oh. I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> oh. Must be tough down there. Yeah. I know. First world problems, right? Um, all right. So moving on. So I'm moving between multiple tasks or windows. Uh, oh, the MBLC construction grant. So um, Krista kind of brought this to our attention that there's been a new call out for MBLC construction grants. Um, Chris went to the initial meeting about the letter of intent, which would be due on April, I think, 28th. Um, I attended the follow-up meeting on how to actually submit their letter of intent if that's something we decide we want to do. But um, Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about what you learned at that meeting? Yeah, um, I actually wrote it up so I could just kind of read it to you. Um, hopefully that's okay. So uh, we found out that the eligible projects for the construction grant are, you can have new construction, you can have an addition, renovation of an existing building, or you can uh, have a conversion of another type of building to turn it into a public library. And it can be, in, in, the library can be included as a portion of a shared building. So I don't know if that's new, but I think our understanding was that wasn't allowed before. Um, and the, but the, the kind of catch is the grants only pay for a percentage of the eligible cost um, based on a, a formula. And they went over a lot of this in detail and they have a lot of information that you can go back to. Um, the el eligible costs include acquisition of land, planning, design, engineering services, project managers, management services, site preparation, installation of utilities, construction, fixed capital equipment, mobile shelving, and mobile slash modular service desks. But I reached out to them after the meeting and I said, at least my understanding was that we're primarily interested in making the building accessible, that that's like our main, our main goal. And they said that would not be eligible for this particular grant. You have to have more going on than that. You have to have, you know, um, basically changing the configuration of the library in, in certain ways. Um, so that's one problem with this, with this grant. Um, and we could consider a larger scale build, building project, but the time frame is pretty short and it would require a lot of effort on the part of Chris and also our town manager and it would have to go to the town meeting you know, for approval because it doesn't cover all the costs. Um, and I found out, I actually have it back there, we, we, in 2011, the trustees commissioned an architectural study, and there's all these drawings of how to reconfigure our building. You, you probably know about it. Um, and so, you know, we could consider a project like that, but to me, it's just overkill. You know, the town would have to cough up more money for, you know, more staff. If you have more built, more levels, you know, more programs, more space, you'd have to have more staff. And, you know, the, the building would cost, um, you know, more to run. And also, I, I'm not sure that's really what, you know, what we need. You know, do we really need, all, you know, like, it looked like at least twice as much space, all, all told. But the elevator part of that project looked pretty good. You know, they they would put it in the back, basically where the annex. An annex is, and you know it could provide access to all all the levels. So, based on all this, I I think we should look into grants that would fund that kind of a thing. You know, the library <coughs> grants are very specific. They focus on library services and certain amount of space for certain functions and you know it's very specific to trying to you know improve public libraries which of course we want the best public library but we don't necessarily need to expand it in that way I don't think so I did find out that there's a community development block grant program 
and the Amherst Library got $100,000 to create accessible parking and entryway. So to me that seems more relevant to what, what we've talked about in terms of you know, trying to make the building more accessible. So I feel like this grant could be really good, but it would be a lot of work and a lot of, uh, it, it might take us in a direction that we, we don't necessarily need to go just to get this, this kind of funds. It may not be what the town needs for the library at this time either. Yeah. We will deal a bit ago. Well, I mean, we have, well, this plan is right behind you there. There's those big sheets of paper. Oh. Um, we can, you know, we can look at them after the meeting. Um, it, it just makes a little wedge onto the back of the building that would have a, an entry at ground level and then it would have stairs and an elevator um, in, in that back part. In that drawing, it also has bathrooms, you know, it, it, it could have more than just the elevator, but it would allow people to get into the building on the ground level and also it would allow the third floor to be accessible because there would be another entryway. How many would it serve, I think, too, in a small town? Like, I mean, um, where will people go? I mean, when they get in the elevator, they go to visit... Well, we, we need something. People with strollers can't get in the building. They have to leave their stroller down there. You oh. know, it's... it's hmm? Calm down. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. We're, just, we're just talking. Right now. <laughs> And people like me, I'm afraid of those stairs. You know, I'm pretty active, but I'm afraid of those well, stairs. It is what it is, too, yeah. I suppose. It's, not, it's not, not a building that is good for a library, frankly. The building itself is not really designed very well to be a library, mm -hmm. period. And to try to overcome that, you end up spending so much money, it seems to me you might as well build a whole new, have a whole new building, you know? Well, uh, that, that's something I didn't add. If you, if you do submit for this grant, you the MBLC grant, you also have to provide an alternative site in case it's determined that your current building, it's too hard to do the things you're trying to do. So that's kind of what you're just saying. Yeah, seems to me it's uh, uh, not an avenue to pursue very, very, long, very well, you know, Fr frankly. Uh, well, there are ramps, like that, that plan also had a ramp, but you know, like, you can't really use a ramp in the winter, can you? I mean, I don't know, maybe. I, I, Ramps are tough. Yeah. But what's the, the timeline on these things? It's well, so long that if we don't do something, mm. we'll be sitting here in 10 years, maybe I won't be, but somebody will be sitting here in 10 years saying, gee, what do we do with the building? Well, that um, plan mm -hmm. was, you know, 12 already, years ago. 12 years old. Yeah, so, you know, I think it's great that that, that happened, that we made, got this official architectural plan, you know, because then we have something to compare it to, but um, I, I don't know. I, I don't think it works right now for this cycle just because there, there would just be a lot to do in that short amount of time. And this other kind of grant, it's too late for this year, but maybe we can think about it if they're going to be opening it up for next year. So the other year. grant being the Community Development Block yeah. Grant? Yeah. Krista, is that grant a matching grant, or is it just the money in pocket? I'm not sure. I ha I'd have to find out more about it. I could I could do that for the next, uh, okay. for the next meeting. I was also going to contact this architect because some of the files that they gave us are on a disk, but I can't read it. We tried on like three different computers, so I was going to see if they had any of the materials still that they could you know, give to us because if we could make it available to the board digitally, that would I, be I believe better. I can open it. Okay. If you give me the disk, I'll, okay. I'll okay. try it and I'll find out what software opens it. Okay. <coughs> I think it was AutoCAD. Oh, That's it's possible. It's possible, yeah. So sorry, I got a little excited about the accessibility, but I think it's really important. And it's also, frankly, it's not, it's not legal to, to not be accessible. 
So, you know, that's part of it too. What, whether it's an elevator to solve that, I, I don't know. If that's what you're asking about, I, I don't know. Well, I wonder, uh, we're speaking about elevator, actually, right? To bring people up to the main library floor. When we have a very short term elevator. Right? Well, it could go to the third floor as well. Or this, whatever, I get mixed up. Is that the second floor? I don't know. I mean, it's only one. The upper one, level. <laughs> yeah. At the present time, when people have children, how do they get them into the library? They're, they're very small. They carry them. Huh? They carry them. Um, and that can go on, I suppose. Well, well it I'm, is going on, but, yeah. but there is a law about it. And then for those that Doesn't are not access. able to do so or are unable to access themselves or it's cumbersome, it may be a deterrent altogether to um, attend events at the library or access materials at the library, or they may be forced to go to neighboring towns where accessibility is less of an issue or it's a non-issue. Yeah. A little quick sidebar. Something else. Um, there was a recent audit of websites for accessibility and mm -hmm. making sure that websites were accessible. Mm -hmm. I was listening to, and I know that we are going to be launching a new website. So yes. when that comes out, um, if and when we want to kind of, we can self audit us ourselves. Yep. It's a free service to see how you can improve your website for accessibility. Okay. And I thought the library may be interested in that. Sounds like a plan. Can you get me the link? grant or do we want to pass on it for now um, Tom's point is well taken like these grants don't come around very often the last one was 2015 and 2016 so they only offer these grants every six or seven years she, she said four after, years I, I'm sorry I forgot to mention that it wouldn't be for four okay years. I think the last ones were in 2016 or 17 but maybe COVID pushed things off a bit um, uh, or do we want to pursue other opportunities? Because what happens is if you submit a letter of intent that's due in April of 2023, and then there's a, and I, I don't know if they give you funding then, or there's a year where you have to then submit your final approval or your, your final plan in May of 2024. Um, and that's where when Chris was talking about having alternative sites, this is where you hire an OPM, I think, to kind of figure out like what is doable. And so, so there's a significant amount of funding that goes into that. And I don't think that guarantees that you're going to receive the grant. I believe there's a process of elimination or some such screening process and not everyone gets the grant. I believe that applicant. is correct, and I think some of that might happen with the letter of intent. That because when I went to the session on how you submit the letter of intent, is it is not terribly onerous. You have to write a six hundred word description of like why you need the grant, and how it's going to benefit the library, and then you have to have a letter from the town administrator, and then any other official, like a planning official or like the treasurer. Um, offering support behind it and then like Krista said they do limit based on what you're asking for so the example they gave at the meeting I went to was like say if you had bad wiring in your library that in itself is not a reason to get the grant if having bad wiring is a result of the fact that you can't provide the technology needed for your community that would be an acceptable reason. So like deferred maintenance costs typically didn't seem to be something they would fund. So it needed to be how you would be improving service to the community. So I'm a little, I am a little surprised, Krista, that they said accessibility wouldn't qualify because it seems like we don't have people coming to the library. Um, you know, that seems like that would be, you know, 
service to the community, but um, but I guess that's not how they how they view that. So. Well, and maybe it's the way. Maybe I didn't explain it properly. Um, you know, like it does sound like you could you could word that in such a way that we can say that people are prevented from coming in. That's a possibility, and I guess too we'd have to figure out like. Would the, I mean, and as you also correctly mentioned, like this is almost a matching grant. Like the town would be required to come up with the majority of the funding, and they would provide what forty to 50, maybe fifty percent. But I think it's more like is a forty sixty split or something like that, Krista. You know what? I just let a lot of those details go yeah. over me, but yeah. I can I can find out. I think it's something like that. it's not it's not I don't, it's at best is I think it's a fifty fifty split. Yeah. You know. Well, and I think a, a lot of what they pay for is this lead up, like hiring mm -hmm. the, the, you know, to make the planning because that's what's expensive for, for towns, I think, um, you know, getting it ready, but then the town does have to pay for part of the construction cost. But that's true of almost everything, school grants, yeah. all matching grants to yeah. some extent. Would it be the strongest intent to try to proceed with getting our accessibility funded through such a grant? Is that our goal? Or would this goal, or would this grant meet other goals that the library has? Well, like Chris was, I was telling her about this and she was mentioning, well, it'd be nice to have places for people to sit if they wanted to read, you know, like just, you know, maybe reconfigure some of the the spaces but I, I don't know how much of that would be would require a grant or would just be you know more cosmetic level because my understanding they won't cover the furniture but if we're talking about construction that would modify the structure yeah it was interesting because this elevator thing they did have it stop at the at the mezzanine level or whatever the balcony level you know, to make it, you know, you'd have to shore it up, obviously, but to make it a kind of a usable space, space. which I think is kind of interesting, you know, and, and that would be, that would require more, um, you know. Am I wrong in thinking that even with an elevator, we'd still need another exit to make it accessible? Or would the elevator up to the mezzanine and the balcony on the second floor? Or where the historical society is, would that make the space accessible for the historical society, etc.? Well, in those plans, they have stairs as well as an elevator. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That we needed to have a second set. Yeah. And can we clarify though? I don't think the MBLC will fund it only funds for library space. So I'm not even sure they could put an elevator in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. With the MBLLC grant, because yeah. the elevator would benefit the bottom floor, which is currently occupied by offices. That's, that's a good point. Our space, and then second floor, which is historical society. Yeah, and and in those plans, which I keep mentioning, and they're available to us. Um, basically, they reconfigured the entire building into a library. I think that is a good point that it might not work anyway because but but to be fair if, if you have the elevator go to the ground floor in this little separate part that, that is the only way to get into the building that would probably count I don't know about the third floor I mean technically it's part of the library it got, it got you yeah. to the library. Hmm? It got you to the library level. No, I mean the third. The, I, I She's, she means the historical society. It, All right, sorry. let's do it. Ground floor, first floor, okay, second floor. Okay, I keep floor. calling it the wrong thing. That's it. Second floor. Sorry, the second floor is part of the library. Second floor meaning what? When you go up the big wooden stairs. Yeah. Where the you're going. Side. You're going just to the to uppermost lumber floor. room, isn't it? There's no library room. It's, it's a, lot of, a lot of stuff up there, right? It's not really a library. Yes. The the grand plan was 
all the offices move out to a either this building reconfigured or some other reconfiguration. Oh. And then the library brick structure would be become a library, floor to ceiling. It would make more sense the other way around, it seems to me. Well, perhaps. We, the building is about. not made to be a library, really, in one sense. It really has too many faults and too many flaws to make it a library in the way Fitchburg has one, or Gardner has one, or Westminster. We well, have all one. these old building libraries are have the same issues. Yeah, they were all built. This building was built to be a library. I know anyway. that, but that was how many years ago? Well, not this building. Sorry, right looking now, at the picture of the. Is there a school library in the in the center school? I don't no. believe there is. Was there ever one? Yes. 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 How is the space being used now? I believe the library was transformed. It has been used in different room. ways. It was a music room for a while. It was yeah. a STEM room. Um, it was, yeah. Could that be a children's library? Not the one we have here. Well, you've got public access as well as school access. In other words, our library is open until 7 tonight. Yeah. Would you have access to the school up until 7? I'm not sure. So there's, you know, public versus school. But if you go into Gardner, there's an old library up near the circle up there. Yeah. Now museum. That's uh, now yeah. museum. The old libraries are largely abandoned. Is it really? Or, well, oh, it, it, as, a as a library. As a library, yeah, yeah. In Winchenden, they transposed the, uh, they, they put in an elevator and set of stairs and expanded. gained access and expanded and had 88 compliance. So there's a mix and match of how yeah. things got done. We haven't figured that out yet. Your points are very well taken. Yeah. Even the architect we talked to in Boston said, it's a very tall and skinny building. You may consider a new library completely. That would be my thinking, but uh, that's expensive also. <laughs> yes. Well. So at this time, I I don't know how the other trustees feel, but I don't feel as though we're in the position to proceed with this grant in this cycle. How do the other trustees feel? I'm with you, frankly. I agree, but if we could figure out the timeline or the runway for these kind of things, I, I think it would be good if we could just document it and we wouldn't have all these questions for ourselves about. Correct. In fact, there's all, excuse me, there's a lot of knowledge, it seems, already, that if we could just get it down and mutually agree on what the what the steps and timeline and whatever else you might call it are, I think we'd be ahead of the game. And also knowing what better grants, perhaps, would Al meet what we're looking for. Yeah, so maybe an ADA grant. Well, and uh, Nate mentioned that he's pursuing that for the town, so mm -hmm. that might be you know, an opportunity for the library. I'm pretty sure he said that when he was here because we told we were talking to him about the accessibility, building accessibility problem. So, you know, maybe we would be able to piggyback on on that. I have asked. He did say that. Yeah. I'm sorry. He did say that at our meeting that they applied for a grant and didn't get it um, last round. The town didn't get it. So he's going to explore how they can their application for it so so can we have like a planning session at a future meeting is that what you were saying well I don't know how we do it maybe maybe there's a document uh, explaining the process I don't know the process for getting this particular grant oh as well as per Morgan's suggestion there are alternative grants so what's, perhaps what's we revisit world? the uh, subcommittee on a grants because we had that discussion as well as so maybe we form a subcommittee on grants and projects on that specifically. They they have a lot of information about how to apply for this and mm -hmm. there's people that you know can work with you directly. So is it is that what you're? Uh, well, I don't know. Maybe someone would visit us. I don't, know, I don't know how to do well, it. Well, I think this had training 
that if I'm wrong, correct me, that, that both Connie and Krista attended as well. Um, and Would like similarly with some other grants. Correct? Yeah. So there w was, and I think it's a matter of attending those training sessions. I think, too, I think we should go back um, about a year or so ago. Um, we put together a list of grant opportunities. We should go back and revisit that and then try to update that document to identify new grants as well. Because I'm not sure that the Community Development Block Grant was on that list. So we might want to do another sweep of grants that are out there. I agree. So it sounds like at this point in time, we want to not pursue the MBLC construction grant um, due to not really fitting the parameters of what we need for renovations to the building, but keep in mind the process for, for the future and then explore other grants moving forward that might better suit our needs. Does that sound accurate? Yes. Disappointing, but I think that I don't think we are in a position to to explore this opportunity right now. Um, next up is a policy review for public services. Um, there was a link in to the revive to the current policy and to the revised policy um, in the. Um, Agenda. Sorry. Um, and this is something that Chris and um, Krista worked on. So, if you would like to introduce that. Oops. I just closed everything. I think. <laughs> oh no, there it is. Um, basically, we had a policy in place that was accepted in in 2012 and so we just reviewed that and the main changes just have to do with trying to uh, rather than listing many mm -hmm. groups of people that might have difficulty getting services just say all and leave it at that so that was the main um, the, the main change and then some of the wording you know, I think we just we just tried to clarify it a little bit, streamline it a little bit. So I don't, there's not a lot of. Change. I think the simplicity and clarification of library staff will treat every patron with equal respect and every request with equal importance summarizes and clarifies the service policy. Well, thank you. I I would agree as well. I I think the. The new bullet points are more concise. Um, I think it's more neutral, whereas the other policy, I think part of it said like, you know, the library patron like should always be right or something like that. Or it, it, it I think this week's better, you know, that it is, it's working to work with the library patron as much as possible. And it's definitely more inclusive. on that um, the link is in the meeting is in the agenda yeah but um, did you get a chance to read it no so the top half is what how it reads right now mm -hmm. and the bottom is changes You then you this, Mutes. No. Do we need to have a motion to approve? I think so. In that instance, I would make a motion to approve the edits to the service policy. 
where will this appear now? Pardon? Where will, this, where will it will this appear? In, in, a, in a manual or? A yeah, and then it will. They will be put on the website. The website. Um, as as Chris explained, they're going to be revising the template for the website, so that's going to include a link for the so all the other policies that we've been updating as well yeah. will appear there. Correct? Yeah, right now they're they're not printed out, but I suppose we could do that. I can, I can print them up and have them in a book, a binder at the count at the front desk or on the table for anybody to look at. Does seem a bit a little bit redundant and, t and the top half is how it reads now. Yeah. And then the bottom half are the changes. So do you so it'll replace okay. it. Yeah. That's why I, I get it. it. So it just changes in the I get it. Word. So there's fewer words down here. Exactly. Okay. With the bullet points and just All right. I get it. I don't want to say simplifying, but clarification and update. Mm -hmm. I think modernized. Modernized. I think we're moving, we need a, oh, So is there a motion to approve? I made a motion. We get a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'm not opposed, um, so okay, then motion approved. Okay, so. thank you. Um, next up, just, um, just, uh, this is just a standing agenda item, town awarded funds for repairs. Um, just an update that CIP, the CIPC committee did recommend the $6,000 for a project manager. Um, so that will go on to the annual town board at the annual town meeting for approval. They are not going to um, give us any additional funds. They're only approving what was initially submitted, which was $6,000. Um, so that's been approved. Um, I went to the CP. C meeting, Community Preservation Committee meeting in February, and they extended our $8,000 grant that we had for foundation repairs until the end of 2024. So that got um, extended. Typically, if you don't spend your funds within two years, they need you to justify it. So they gave us an extension going forward. Um, so, so those are good. Um, the first floor rehab, we still have this year to kind of finish it up because that's within the two year period. Same with the brick pointing as well. So we don't have to justify, that has to be, ideally should be completed by the end of 2023. If not, we'll have to go back to CPC in early 2024 to justify an extension for it. So, so this current amount that we have listed as funding is um, we still have that money now. Um, we initially um, did not submit, so we did not submit a CPC pro, uh, um, proposal for additional funding for a project manager. Um, so if we want to do that, their next meeting is March 9th. And so we have to have a proposal submitted to them by then. I drafted a proposal, um, an application. I've not done one before, so I have no idea if it's any good or not. So I would maybe look to Tom to, to review it and give some feedback on it. Um, but we probably have to have it to them by Monday if they want to review it at next Thursday's meeting. And that is if we decide, we, do we want, do we think we can work with the $6,000 that CIPC is going to give us, assuming it's gonna be approved, which it most likely would be, I think, or do we think we need additional money for a project manager for next fiscal year? I feel like this is personally out of my scope. I don't know how much they would cost. Tom, do you have an idea yeah, for thought, a project I manager? I, I did something like this already once. Didn't I do this last, last uh, since the last meeting? Well, so this is so this so this is where I was confused because I because the last meeting said we were submitting a proposal to CIPC for like nine thousand dollars, which was a provision of six thousand. But From that, six was, to nine. that was CIPC that we submitted six thousand to. So we decided not to submit to CPC. But they're allowing us to submit now. Like
like they're willing to give us another opportunity to submit if we think we need more money. When I submitted the 6,000, I did a quick search for um, like architectural engineers, like hourly rate, and it was like $150. And so I estimated like 40 hours to give us a plan to, for moving forward, which is how I got to 6,000. So if we think we need additional funding, we can submit the CPC proposal. Well, this is where there was confusion about CIPC and CPC, so. Who would the money pay for? An expert architect to come in and look at the building and make recommendations? I'm not sure what the money would be spent for. This was gonna be spent for um, planning how we have the how we execute the currently on the table projects in the most effective way. And I think that a, a, a building manager who, would, as a profession, does this. Yeah. Do we have anybody in mind? Is somebody uh, in the, in the wings? Not as of yet. There are so, people that do this okay. professionally. Yeah. Now let's just do it. What's what's the delay in doing it? I don't understand that. The question is whether we want more money than we already have. Do right. we anticipate needing more than 6000 Do we know what the fee is for so, someone, a person like that? Well, I think Connie told you how she got that number. She looked it up, it was $150 an hour, and she gave the guy a week to put together the plan. That's not unreasonable. Yeah. Well, but I know I said 40 hours, so 40 well, hours could be like... A week, yeah, you know, a, a week, week so I'm sorry hours. I said a week, but I meant, <laughs> I meant 40 hours. Spread out however it is. And this but, person would look at the building and look at the uh, wiring requirements, the, the restrooms, the heating and so on, and make recommendations, right? And get a fee for that. Do it, doing all of that, right? Yes, but he doesn't do the work. No, That's I realize just, that. Then, then that would come up with a figure of so much money to do the work. And in, in the town, um, board would approve that money, presumably? It's a figure and a schedule. It's a, it's a sequence of events. Yeah. Yeah. But it's on top of the 6,000. Oh, yes, right, yeah. To so, get, right? So yeah. That's, is that the question? We anticipate gain 6,000. Do we as a trustee board feel like we need to apply to CPC for additional funds? Tom, in your experience, do you think that 6,000 no. should cover? I, I'm getting a little uh, Muddled. No, no, I'm getting a little. It seems like an awful lot of work to get six thousand um, dollars. If if we need, you know, if we get the first six thousand dollars, and this person puts out a good plan, mm -hmm. and we want to advance that plan, I'm going to suggest that we just take money out of our own accounts and do it. It would be in the neighborhood of. I don't know, three, four, five, six thousand dollars. So if you feel like it's in that neighborhood, then I would say that we do not need to proceed in putting together another proposal to CPC for any additional funds. I agree. We could use okay. trust funds if, oh. if additional trust funds. Or the CIPC do not come forward. I accounts. concur. Sounds that. good to me. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you an example. Do you agree, is... Connie? I, I, I do. I'm very comfortable with that. I just drafted a yep. PC application in case we decided we wanted to go forward so we weren't like scrambling at the, very, at the very, very last minute, you know. I feel so. like we are all on the same page on that and we will proceed okay. with whatever CIPC awards us. Okay, so CIPC is going to, is projected to award us $6,000, okay. you know, per we, one town meeting. We don't get um, that till June 30th. But it allows us a exactly. window of time. So it could be also we could start working to hire somebody now and we pay a little bit of, out of this year out of our funds and then we pay the remaining out of, you know, next fiscal year. So if we want to get somebody going, we could work to maybe find somebody in April, May to kind of start to build a relationship. Yeah. Um, I did, in that proposal, I did put in a list of um, links to OPMs and also some people at WPI who maybe could serve as a consultant, perhaps. So that might be some starting points to to investigate. So, so 
we had the six thousand dollars already in our budget, we're right? We're projected to receive it. Okay. And that is we were required to spend that for the person coming in to examine the facility and make recommendations. If awarded. To yeah. make, yes, to make recommendations on money that we've already received, which is the first floor rehab, yeah. um, foundation repair, and um, brick the pointing. Brick. And then, as well, we have some other things in the long term planning that we need to explore, such as a boiler, window replacements, and I'm sorry, there's something else I think that- They're on the out. back of uh, Chris's uh, report. Yeah. yeah, well those are the ones we have money for. That's what we received funding for, but there's things we haven't received funding for that are we still, are still need to explore. And just to loop it back to what we were already talking about, maybe if we were going to be trying to hire somebody to help us, it could be to help us figure out how to get how to make the building more accessible. You know, just a, a separate thing. Yes. You know, because there's a lot of people out there apparently that work on libraries, so you know, we might be able to get mm -hmm. pay somebody to like like the gentleman we talked to, you know, he had some ideas, but it wasn't necessarily well. He, he it was kind of specific to our situation. I guess. Yeah, he visited. Yeah, or he has colleagues visit. Yeah, I thought we had dropped the issue of the accessibility, at least for the time being, entirely. I was just saying that if we were looking to get money to hire someone with expertise to help us, that might be we could tie it in with that. Okay. Accessibility is presently such a big nut, it's beyond the scope of the kind of items we're talking about. That's why I'm thinking the person we're hiring should be somebody with more nuts and bolts, electricity, heating, and so on, not dealing with uh, elevators and It's not an architect. Huh? It's not an architect. I know, but somebody who would deal with uh, what is needed physically in the building right now, heating system, electricity. And not talking about ways to make, you know, put in elevators and no, that kind of thing. So, little projects, project manager. Yeah. He mm -hmm. puts them in the right order, he does them efficiently, makes sense out of it. Right now, we're just kind of spot Yeah. Okay. So, we're not, so just to recap, we are not going to, to submit a proposal to CPC for additional funding. We're going to work with the Six thousand dollars that we are assuming is going to be approved at town meeting to hire a project manager, and we might start that process earlier using monies from our account. Does that recap? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Tom, do you want to give a quick update on the electrical? I know you sent out a yeah. estimate a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we. I uh, was unable to get the fellows from Gardner. What's their name again, Chris? Woodford. Woodford. I, I, so I uh, called uh, Mr. Goldsmith over in Barry, who has worked on our library in the past, knows his way around it. He visited, we walked through the job, we estimated, we uh, identified what needs to be done. It's mostly electrical outlets because we're not doing the TV room work scope. And uh, it came up to about $2,000. There is one pending item, it's called the whole building surge protection, which might, I don't know, double this estimate, might go to 4,000. But nevertheless, that kind of a number is within our budget. And um, I'm waiting for him to give me a date. I want him to call either me or Chris before he comes in and starts doing anything. And uh, we'll schedule a, schedule a time and date and hours when the public isn't involved. And sure. we'll get it done. Great. Thank you for uh, taking the lead on that and taking care of that. I appreciate it. Well, I'd also like to just say that it's an example of when we start out thinking about the electrical system. We've done a lot of work already. Uh, we had a new box put in and things done by the other firm. And it all boils down to like a $2,000 project. And um, if it was much smaller, he probably wouldn't have helped us because he, he can't make any money on a $2,000 project. But um, he's willing to help us and we'll get it done. 
But these things, when you when you start shaking the tree, they come down to relatively small things if you're taking them a bite at a time. If you're trying to do the whole building with an elevator, well, that blows up to two million dollars. We're not in there in that world. Oh, and this can be done. And this can be done as a standalone project without interfering with other things. Okay, great. Thank you. We also have a foundation repair still listed. I know we had talked about DPW. I don't know if we've reached out to them or not. Um, well, we we uh, we reached out to them through Dennis once, and um, he said it's a possibility. The town manager said it's a possibility, but I think what we're waiting for is a reasonable break in the weather and get onto their schedule in the spring. The spring is in three weeks. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> that <laughs> is, according to the calendar. And uh, yeah. uh, we might initiate something now and get on get on Travis's schedule. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. We'd want to get on his radar, so like knowing that it might not happen until like April or May, but at least so he's aware that we are interested in to see if they can work with us. If you want me to do that, I'd be glad to. Um, so I think you can. I, there's a form that we submit. That's right. Um, and so I know Chris has the form. The form is in the um, shared drive of, uh, for the hub trustees. And Tom, you might have the form as well. I do. Um, so we could, I mean, so if you or Chris wanted to submit it, that's great. I might um, work with Chris. And it turns out that they can't do it. Um, I mean, I just did a couple, like, quick Google searches of, like, foundation repair companies and there's a couple there's one in like Barry there's one like in Clinton or something that we could also maybe look at too if, if that doesn't pan out for us Chris I'll just touch base with you on that and move it to the next square sounds good so we have to complete that by June uh, I, think I think December. I mean, ideally December. If not, we just go for a um, extension, which I think we show that we're demonstrating progress. And when I went to the meeting, I kind of explained to them that you know, we're trying to get a project manager on board to kind of help us guide us through the project so we're doing things in a logical manner. So, I mean, ideally, it's a two year window. It's the end of 2023. Um, but we can always, I think we can go back to CPC and ask for an extension if, if need be. So, which is what we did with the eight thousand dollars for the found eight thousand dollars for foundation repair. I think that we yeah, eight thousand dollars for foundation repair. We got an extension. So, so the way these are listed on the agenda, I'm kind of confused. So, the foundation repair was extended no. or wasn't extended. The foundation repair was extended to twenty the end of twenty twenty three. That's the eight thousand dollars. Oh, only till twenty. Oh, because it's from. Is that fiscal twenty three? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, missed, I just misspoke. I just misspoke. Twenty twenty four. That's fiscal twenty four. I think they asked me if I wanted fiscal or calendar, and I think I said calendar. Good. Through. I'm sorry. I can, I can go back and look at the meeting minutes, but I'm pretty sure we've discussed calendar. So December 2024. Okay. But is that, is that, there's a bullet point that says you attended the CPC meeting, and then there's another bullet point that says foundation repair. Are those the same things? Uh, I mean, they're both. So I, I attend. I did attend the CPC meeting to give an update of where we're at on different projects. No, it's a, that's where it says you got you got the funding extended. I'm just wondering yes. if that's for this foundation repair that's listed separately. I'm just trying to figure out if there's two foundation things or just one foundation thing. There are two there's, foundation. Um, uh, there are two. Uh, okay. okay so yes. There are two foundation things on the list. One in 2019. And this says foundation. Yeah, they're both foundation. Another repairs. one from CIPC. 
there were two separate line items. One was 20, 2019, one was 2020. 2019 was CPC. Okay, so this other bullet is 2020 foundation repair. Well, they're both the same. I mean, we have we have two pots of money for foundation repair. And we had, and we have done some work on it, but we haven't completed it yet. So we have a total of eight thousand dollars, or we have more than that. We have eight thousand dollars. If you look on the back of the, I don't have. Oh, okay. I got. I can. I, I can there's see 8, that. There's eight thousand, and then okay. there's I think five thousand, right? From yep. CIPC, yes. this is foundation, and okay. then eight thousand. Okay. It's just they're listed separately, and they're both called foundation repair. Right, but they're from two separate funds. One okay. CPC, and one is CIPC. Okay. So the one that you have listed as a separate bullet point is the CIPC. No, the $8,000 is the CPC. And so the other one is the CIPC. No, well, I mean, the thing is, the foundation repair, we still need to, I mean, so I'm, I'm putting that money together. There's one foundation repair needs to happen. So there's two pots of money for foundation repair. And I read it as the second bullet point is just, hey, have we followed up? Do we want to Got follow it. up with DPW? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I just, you know, if we look at this next year, I just want to make sure we understand. No, 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 that's so, perfect, yeah. Sorry. We, we could add, in addition to adding the date of these funds, we could say they were sourced from a source and must be complete by a certain date. Okay. Uh, and that would... Well, okay. I think... Or it's a two-year window. Okay. Oh. Okay. I think it's already provided. It says CPC provided a one-year extension for the 2019 foundation report and we then say electrical update which is separate and then we go back to foundation repair which is just a talking point about hey do we want to follow up with dpw am i incorrect on reading those talking points that, that no those sense. were just talk those were the talking points yeah, yeah. Okay. okay no problem so that's the talking points and that is thank you and then we already discussed it was out of order but we already discussed about do we want to submit a proposal to yes. cpc and that we've decided we're not proceeding with. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. So I'll let Sandra know we're not going to submit a proposal. No. So, so that Sorry, you guys concludes the CPC side. Correct? Any other Sandra? discussion on it? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Was there any other discussion on the CPC funds and updates? No, okay. no they were, the other two funds were 2021, so we're yep. we should try to have them done by 2023. If not, we can See, see if we can get an extension. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, you guys get a little bit of my stream of consciousness when I do meeting agendas because I want to make sure I remember what we're talking about. So. It's fine. I no, just, I'm sorry. Good. I'm just really confused by all this stuff. So I'm just trying to clear it up. No, you're but, great. But you, your explanations are, are, now I understand it. And you're doing a great job asking for clarification where you're making the minutes and you're thinking long term mm -hmm. about clarification. Absolutely. So, okay. Good. Completely justified <laughs> and great, Kristen. Good. And I have the video. That helps. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, next agenda item and should be pretty quick. Um, as you guys are probably seeing, Nate Pedro has been doing a bunch of like newsletters related to different offices. So he wants to make sure that all offices are represented. Um, so he either wants so he wants somebody from trustees or Chris to um, be a point person to submit information to them. Is Chris still there? I can't. Yes, yes I'm still here. She's <laughs> hiding from you. <laughs> um, Chris, you had said that you had done that something similar with Ryan, right? Yes. So could you just send upcoming events to Nate um, to let it, so they can be included in the newsletter? Yes. Okay. Um, and I think I attached the draft of the email, and I think um, – Who's working on it? Is it Bobby? Yes. 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 Okay. So if you could send stuff to, um, I guess Bobby related to it, any kind of a, like new story times or interesting things that we're doing, that would be awesome. Okay. Are they collecting those on a monthly basis? I will talk to Bobby and find out. Okay. We could maybe present some of your great numbers that you keep track of. You know, mm -hmm. with like a little chart or something. So this is besides the library website, right? 
yeah, this would have nothing to do with a website. This would be bought, um, uh, the town office putting out information about things going on in the town. Would it be too much to ask for you to add to the director's report a section on upcoming events? So if we know of upcoming events, sure, I, be comprised? The only reason that I, I didn't do that is that I was focusing on what I had done the previous month. Yeah. But that is something that I can certainly do. It's not an issue. There's no website as such right now. Is there, this is something brand new that, that the town manager wants to establish? No, this is a new town manager. Um, and what he wants to do is he wants to make sure that people in town know what's happening. So a new website then, right? No, it's oh, not no. a new website. Okay. No. Nope. Uh, if, oh. I'll let you know if they ever update their website. As far as I know, <laughs> there aren't any plans for it. But then, of course, I'm a step removed. Well, I think they actually had discussed wanting to try to make it a little bit more uniform and also cleaning up town websites. So mm -hmm. he has talked about that. But what he's doing is he's starting to do like a, hi, welcome to Hubbardston, and this is what's happening. And so gain information from all the different departments of what's coming up and being able to share it so that the public okay. is comprised of what's coming up. That's a good idea. Yeah. Well, and when they do send out an email or a Facebook or something, it shows up on the, on the, as news on the mm -hmm. town website. So when you look at the town website, there's like a little news. I don't know if you yeah, ever look at yeah. You know, there's a little I news section. I don't look at it very often, but you're right. I recall seeing that, yeah. And he mentioned the level of standardization. Exactly. So that our message yeah. was consistent. Or brand or whatever you want to call it. So Chris will be the point person for the library. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Um, one more thing before we move into executive session is that um, Krista and Josephine's terms as trustees are coming up. Um, I did talk to Josephine and she is not going to be running for re-election. So we will need to try to see if we can identify someone who might want to become a trustee. Um, Krista, have, are you interested in running again? I was planning on it. Good, okay, great, great, thank you. So, um, if you'll Josephine's have me, <laughs> yes. yes, if I can get my signatures. <laughs> Yeah, so Josephine's been on the uh, trustees for, for many, many years and has done a great job um, leading as chair and just being very active. And so, um, you know, she's taking a break from it, so we wish her best and all that. So, so if there's anybody watching the YouTube that wants to step up, by all Yeah, means. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is there a way of knowing how many YouTube watchers we may have? Yes. Sure. Yes. Do we have a sense of? Um, you, I'd have to look. I, I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look at the YouTube meetings because I'll tell you how many views have occurred. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to say the last time I looked at it, the last month was 18 or so, I believe. So people but, are watching this meeting right now, for no. example? They'll oh, watch it once it it's becomes. uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. YouTube. Uh, all of the board meetings that are recorded are uploaded and you can watch it at your convenience which is really nice because you know you can listen um, to hear what's going on while you're doing stuff around the house it works and it adds to accessibility <laughs> it does yes. right. so so and I think oh. I was just gonna say uh, among those 18 there has to be somebody dedicated to the library that will <laughs> come on our board <laughs> But I think it gets announced, you know, whoever gets messages from the town will get a notice that there yeah. will be, there's the basically vacancy. there's two positions the open. Yeah. I mean, because, but you're running. Yeah. Re-election is, you. you're welcome, but I mean, re-election is the same as yeah. an open seat, right? I mean, if, if yeah. Josephine, exactly. yeah. if Josephine were to um, resign, I believe the process would be that we would find a candidate to replace her for the remainder of her term. And in doing so, uh, we would have to go to, I think the selectmen and they would agree to it. And uh, that person would serve until June 30. And it would give that person an option to um, come in, see a little bit about what we do in more detail perhaps, and uh, elect to run. 
Is that the case, though? Is she well, I don't designing? know. Um, no, I don't know. I don't know anything. But um, I'm saying that was a process that I believe we used with you, Bob. Christian. And Me, Bob. yeah. Bob. But Josie's term is over, isn't it? In no. June. In June, yeah. She's staying on until June? Well, well, that's the question I just raised. Oh, yeah. If she were to resign. And is she planning? She, she, she has not resigned. She's. When I talked, when I emailed with her today, I asked her if she was running for another term, and she said no. But if she's not coming to meetings, then maybe that's resigning. I don't know. No, she would have to write a letter to resign. Oh, okay. Um, but if somebody was interested, that wouldn't stop them from coming in because it is an open meeting and they can come in and hang sure. out. Sure. That's yeah. another way to do it. Yeah. Anyone's welcome. Yeah, so if you're watching, come. <laughs> okay. All right, so at this point, um, we are going to go into executive session per Title III, Chapter 30A um, of the Open Meeting Law to discuss the performance evaluation for Chris Barbera. After, the exec after executive session, this meeting is going to be adjourned. So Chris, at this point, I think we're going to ask you to leave. Oh, oh okay. Have a great night. <laughs> Thanks. You get to enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, she gets to get out early. So, can 